Here, we introduce a common technique to prove that two sets are equal. If we want to prove that sets A and B are equal, we can show that A is a subset of B and A is a superset of B. Where A is a superset of B, denoted by the backward subset symbol, just means that B is a subset of A. We can formulate the subset conditions as X in A implies X in B, and X in B implies X in A. This method is called double inclusion. As an example, let's prove the distributivity result that we have seen in set theory. We want to show that A intersect the union of B and C equals A intersect B union A intersect C. First, let's show that the left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side. Let X be an element of A intersect the union of B and C. So applying the definition of the intersection, we know that X is in A and X is in B union C. Then we make use of the definition of the union and write X in B union C as X in B or X in C. Now, we need X in A and either X in B or X in C. So one of two things can happen either x in A and x in B, or x in A and x in C. This means that x is in A intersect B, or x is in A intersect C. In other words, x is in A intersect B union A intersect C. So we have shown that the left-hand side is contained in the right-hand side. Let's consider the other direction. Let x be an element of A intersect B union A intersect C then x is in A intersect B, or x is in A intersect C. So either x is in A and x is in B, or x is in A and x is in C. Again, in both cases, x must be in A, and I need x in B or x in C. So x is in A, and x is in B union C. This means that x is in A intersect the union of B and C. So the left-hand side contains the right-hand side, and the proof is complete. Let's prove the other distributivity result. We could use double inclusion just as before, but let's try to prove it using the previous result, which is A intersect the union of B and C equals A intersect B union A intersect C. Here, we have an expression for the intersection of two sets, A and B union C. So let's use it to rewrite the right-hand side of our wanted result by replacing A by A union B, B by A, and C stays the same. By the previous result, we have bracket A union B intersect A union bracket A union B intersect C. Now, we call the property that A union B contains A, so A union B intersect A is just A. On the other hand, we can apply the previous result again on A union B intersect C to have A intersect C union B intersect C. Bear in mind that distributing to the left and right are equally valid because of commutativity that we can swap the positions of two sets in a union or intersection. Now, by associativity, we may remove the square bracket in a union of three sets. Observe that A intersect C is contained in A, so when we take the union, it has nothing to add to A. So the union simplifies to A union the intersection of B and C as required. Let's look at another proof using double inclusion. This time, we prove the De Morgan's law, which is another useful result in set theory that I had promised to prove. Let X be an element of the complement of A union B. By the definition of the complement, this means that X is not an element of A union B. At this point, it is useful to draw the Venn diagram to help us visualize. But bear in mind that a Venn diagram does not constitute a proof. It only helps us to think about the problem. To lie outside A union B, X must be both outside A and outside B. That is, X is not an element of A, and X is not an element of B. So X is in A complement, and X is in B complement. 
In other words, x is an A complement intersect B complement. So one inclusion is done. Conversely, let x be an element of A complement intersect B complement. Then, x is an A complement and x is an B complement. So we need x to be not in A and x to be not in B. Again, this is the same thing as not inside A union B. So, x is in the complement of A union B, which proves the other inclusion. For completeness, we also prove the other De Morgan's law. While double inclusion also works, we try to prove it using the previous result, which states that the complement of A union B equals A complement intersect B complement. It gives an expression for the complement of a union, so we consider the complement of the union on the right-hand side of our wanted result, and replace A by A complement and B by B complement. We obtain A complement complement intersect B complement complement, which simplifies to A intersect B. This means that the complement of A intersect B equals the complement of the complement of A complement union B complement. This is just equal to A complement union B complement.